Hi! Welcome to this part of my review featuring the Nightfell core book. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review featuring this amazing dark fantasy setting for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to continue with the ethnicities, focusing on the Garnar and the Grey Folk. Let's talk about the Garnar first. The Garnar, also known as the Alperns, are named after the lands of Alper, which they colonized thanks to their adaptability to harsher climates. Among themselves, they also use the name Garnar, named after one of the last mountain giants who inhabited that place, a symbol of might and solemnity. The harshness of their homeland has hardened them in body and spirit and, although they may seem all too blunt, a little rough around the edges, even compared to the customs of other peoples, their most intimate nature is that of a genuine and amiable people. Over the centuries, the Garner gradually detached themselves from the ancient tradition, adhering, for the most part, to pagan cults, more in line with the folklore of the cold north, and of all the children of the forest, born from the heart of the primes where the human souls struggled to explain certain phenomena and the old creatures of the mountains, the Alperns have always dabbled in studying the ancient secrets to feel closer to the charm and ferocity of nature. Their true history actually started with the mountain giants, extinct in the first age, with whom they had very little contact, but immediately learned not to disturb. Once these titans stopped crossing the lands of Alper, Many natural balances seem to have failed, and the magic of those places twisted to darkness. Then there were the pale trudents, tall creatures of feminine appearance with lost lineage. The trudents got the better of the giants, taking advantage of the sense of honor inherited from the ancestors of the Sempiternal with their cruelty, greed and manipulation. They are akin to the gigantic daughters of the earth known as Perthas and strike fear in the hearts of all Garner. Those who inhabited the Alper tell tales of these tricks, half women and half birds of prey, whose power drew equally on the energies of the world and the dark evil of Enferon. The Garner have always feared or deified these creatures, especially those who ascended as Perthas. However, the boldest and most devoted to old Garner amongst the Alperns felt outraged by the machinations of the Truden, thus declaring war on them. At the dawn of the Second Age, as the world was deprived of Lagoran's leadership and the ancient tradition took hold, the conflict in the lands of Alper was resolved. The chieftains of the Garner agreed to a truce with the cruel-hearted women of the woods in exchange for gifts of power and magic. The bystanders at the Blood Pact became feral creatures, later known as the Om of the Woods, giving birth to a wild lineage of monstrous beings, and the entire race of Alperns suffered from the shape-shifting curse, which took centuries to keep at bay. They never again trusted the Trudents, who became their worst nightmare. Since then, others have begun to call them wild offspring. Let's talk about some of the racial traits of the Garners. You have great strength, and your constitution or wisdom is also pretty high. The longevity of the Alperns is the same as that of other humans. When it comes to alignment, although ancient folklore and memories of the past are still very alive in the hearts of the Alperns, several have adhered to the apostates of Rahidra in the hope of keeping the spirit of the primes alive, but their open-mindedness often causes them to adhere to any creed that gives them welcome. Alperns are of equal stature to humans, although generally tall. They have decent speed. When it comes to languages, they can speak, read and write in common, and they also know to speak the wild jargon. By virtue of their superior strength, Alperns can wield great swords, mauls and great axes with one hand. Held with one hand, these weapons deal 1d10 of damage. This race manifests traits inherited from the beasts to which they are so close, therefore they are quite athletic. And there is the reckoning of betrayal. The curse imposed by the Trudens exacts a harsh toll on the Alperns during the lunar cycle, the race of the full moon 
and of the birth moon of each individual Alpern, alter their appearance with animal traits while maintaining a humanoid form. Depending on the atavistic beast, an animal extinct during the first two ages, which you choose during character creation, your character can develop a fur or plumage, a carnivorous dentition or rapacious claws. The shape-shifting grants a particular feature and persists throughout the entire lunar phase, after which the character regains the usual appearance. If the birth moon corresponds to the full moon, the characters also gain the beast moon feature listed for their atavistic beast. When characters take on bestial traits, they have a disadvantage on charisma checks except intimidation. So maybe your nature is that of the primeval bear. When you take melee damage equal to or lower than your character level plus your constitution modifier, you can use your reaction to make a melee attack against the attacker. You also have an advantage on charisma checks based on intimidation, and you have a bit more hit points. Maybe your form is that of the striped wolf. You have advantage on wisdom checks based on perception. And of course, this is due to your smell and hearing. So you are like a wolf tracking its prey. And you also have advantage on wisdom checks based on survival to follow tracks. There is also an advantage on attacks against targets adjacent to an ally. And these are just a few examples of these primeval forms. Now there is a variant, the Garner Vampire. What if you choose the Vampire class as a Garner character? Vampirism imposes a drastic mutation on the atavistic beast of an Alpern, giving rise to a unique kind of curse. This particular mutation replaces the reckoning of betrayal trait, because now your nature is that of the dark Chiropteran. Do you remember those movies and video games where the vampires turn into these very powerful and monstrous creatures, like in Castlevania, the last form of Dracula, every time you face him at the end of the game, or Francis Ford Coppola's Dracula? You are incredibly perceptive during this form, during this shape shift, to the point that your senses are so finely attuned that you will have no disadvantage whatsoever fighting those things that are invisible and you will be extremely resistant to blindness and deafness. You also have plenty of example Garner names in this section of the book. You have male names such as Dormel, Mithern, Varknel. You have female names such as Jonah, Otre, Forin. You also have common nicknames such as Strong Soul, Strong Arm or Quick Arrow. There are also example Beast Moon nicknames, such as Red Eagle, Odd Raven, or Biting Joss. Then we have the Grey Folk. A vast and superstitious people, the Greys have an unparalleled ability, aided by expansionist aims befitting a proud and ambitious dynasty. Over the centuries, they have made the unexplored and hostile lands of the Eastern Mark their home and the focal point of a culture that gathers customs from a variety of sources. Laboriousness, craftsmanship, and propensity for military strategy have made the Grey Folk famous throughout Jurmen. When the Greys colonized the territory of the Eastern Mark, expanding and claiming the entire region, they were led by the first of their rulers, Erwin the Mighty. He was an anireth of noble lineage, who abandoned his roots to start conquering new lands. His three sons gave rise to three distinct noble families who inherited control of the new kingdom, moving from an absolute monarchy to a form of oligarchy centered on a triumvirate. The heads of families, whether male or female, of the three dynastic lines became regents, renamed Lords of the Mark, and each of them exerted absolute power only over their own fiefdom where consultation with the other two was mandatory regarding matters of war and state. Over the years, the different political organization and environmental conditions led the inhabitants of the Mark to detach themselves culturally from the first men. The new government once had three neuralgic centers of power, Hislit Spear, Arboron, and Penumbra, all of which are now nothing but ruins, haunted by anguished memories and spectral silences. 
the sacred place of the Grey Folk, where the Triumvirate gathered at the war table, was in the White City, a mountain stronghold now presided over by the wise masters of tradition. Among the most sought after memorabilia and musical instruments in all the Yurmen region, none compared to the artifacts of grey artisans, as they are all well versed into all forms of craftsmanship and metallurgy. They are also extremely skilled when it comes to warfare. The Grey Folk took this name from the indiscriminate mixture of various ethnicities with their customs and beliefs to remember that all colors, when amalgamated, produce grey. Among them can be found humans with the most varied somatic traits, pigmentations and physical peculiarities. Let's talk about the traits of the greys. The charisma is quite high, along with any other two ability scores of the choice of the player. When it comes to age, the longevity of the greys is the same as that of other humans. Concerning alignment, often followers of the ancient tradition, grey folk tend not to preclude any kind of religion. They can therefore manifest alignments and beliefs of all kinds. They are of medium size and of decent walking speed. A grey character is also proficient in two skills of the player's choice. They are also proficient with short swords, long swords, heavy crossbows and pikes. And they are quite stubborn. Each time a grey character completes a short or long rest, they gain temporary hit points based on their charisma. They also have warrior prowess. The speed of the character is not reduced by wearing armor, and the character ignores the disadvantage on dexterity stealth checks usually imposed by heavy armor. When it comes to languages, the greys can speak, read and write in common. You also have example names, male exotic names such as Gothei, Bayu or Lingsu. There are female exotic names such as Anixi, Corlin or Kyuku. There are male grey names, that is, conventional or normal names, such as Erven, Enern, or Osbol. There are also female grey names, such as Uthlen, Forel, and Amanda. And this concludes this part of the review. In the next part, we are going to continue with the Ishrem and the Krampus. These two ethnicities are quite interesting when compared to the other two, because in the case of the Alperns, they are pretty much shapeshifters. And I like it how even though you are not transformed into your animal form, so to speak, you still have great capacity when it comes to fighting up close and personal. You are quite mighty and sturdy. And you definitely want to consider taking the vampire character class if you want to play as a monstrous Dracula sort of character. Even though I can tell you right now that the vampire character class is already quite monstrous by itself. This is just a way of modifying your shape-shifting ability when the moon forces that change upon you. Now when it comes to the Grey Folk, I think these are the most normal humans within the setting. Because of the mixture with different ethnicities, you can still have some very unique traits to your character. For example, in the image of the Grey Folk of the Lady Wizard that you saw on screen, it seems like her entire sclera in the eyes is blue colored, but she still looks pretty normal when compared to, for example, the Andy Red or the Alperns. They look slightly more monstrous. And I also like it that despite being fragile in appearance when compared to the other more monstrous ethnicities, you are still quite capable and skilled when it comes to martial training, temporary hit points, and your ability to wear heavy armor without suffering disadvantages. So I think this is a perfect candidate for the tank of the group or the frontliner. Thank you for watching this part of the review. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that have been supporting the channel by sending right through RPG Give certificates. If anyone else wants to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, Thank you and see you later.